Time and time again, Jews have risen from the ashes stronger and more powerful than before. This documentary will showcase one of those incidents, the Holocaust. Before the murders and physical torturing of Jews, there was a more subtle type of torturing. The time leading up to the Holocaust consisted of hate towards the Jews, including mocking, unfair treatment, and eventually, the destruction of Jewish property. The Explanation of the Holocaust The Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes the Holocaust as a thorough destruction involving intensive loss of life, especially through fire. But more specifically, the Holocaust during World War II is described as a systematic, bureaucratic, state-sponsored persecution and murder of six million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators. What occurred during this event was a horrific murdering of Jews, gypsies, and outcasts. There were death camps where gas chambers were there to exterminate as many people as possible. The German people stood to the side while the Nazis came and destroyed all that was considered holy to the Jews. The Holocaust Encyclopedia stated that in 1933, the Jewish population of Europe stood at over 9 million. Most European Jews lived in countries that Nazi Germany would occupy or influence during World War II. By 1945, the Germans and their collaborators killed nearly two out of every th three European Jews as part of the final solution to the Nazi policy to murder the Jews of Europe. The all-important question we are required to answer is this. What is our obligation to those who died in and lived through the Holocaust? We found that the answer to this was to ensure the story and the memory of the Holocaust is never forgotten. In order to prove the need to ensure the story and the memory of the Holocaust is never forgotten, you have to not only look at what the Holocaust was itself, but also to look at the testimonies of those who survived that horrific event. Each of us interviewed a Holocaust survivor and learned their stories. Those who survived the Holocaust are aging and will unfortunately not be here forever. Our job is to share their stories and everything they went through. First, we interviewed Albert Hirsch. We asked him how he viewed hate, especially due to the fact that he went through the Holocaust. My mother used to say, hate, don't hate anybody because it's a sickness. And I remembered that forever. And how he saw hate could affect people. There's, you only need one bad person to, to, uh, to make everybody collaborate. With all this in mind, he said the way we should commemorate those from the Holocaust was by. Well, I hope you, you kids will remember it and, and be with you all what, what's go around you because one bad person can influence millions. And those are the ones we have to be careful not to, not to uh, say, oh, he's just a dummy, or the, he's not a dummy. And then we interviewed George Cronenberg. Mr. Cronenberg saw one of our responsibilities was to keep the memory alive. He says this here. Uh, after all these years, it is most important that we keep the story of the Holocaust alive because it was such a dreadful situation at the time that uh, nobody should ever forget of what happened. How he helps this cause is by doing this. And I spoke at the International Film Festival where they showed a documentary about uh, children from Shaban where a man saved something like 300 children. And I was given the opportunity at that time to speak about myself. And this is, and this is primarily why I do what I do, and I do go all over and try to tell um, high school kids, college students, any different um, organizations that are willing to listen. Because I find in the world that we live now, it is so terribly important. Considering he teaches, he has a very important message. It was such a dreadful situation at the time that uh, Nobody should ever forget of what happened. There are a lot of deniers in the world who claim that the situation never happened. And of course, I'm 
one of those people who went through this, you know, it makes a big difference of whether you read about the Holocaust or you actually meet somebody who went through this. It has a totally different impact. I find it very difficult for people who don't, who don't actually have not happened, haven't experienced this, to really and truly understand it. Besides facing deniers of the war, he still struggles with other haters, even all these years later. If you have, if you um, let hatred go on without doing much about it, you know, that, that should, not, should not happen here. You, ha you have to speak up and you see something, you know, you know that is um, hurtful to other people you have to speak out against that. I mean, there should be, there should not be any kind, of, not in this country, any kind of hatred. And I find, find this a lot lately. I find there's a lot of hatred in colleges and uh, so forth. And um, I, I feel that even as a Jewish community, we don't really speak out. I find unless something affects us personally, then we say something. But I, I think we as an organization, a religion, or whatever you want to call it, we need to speak out against hatred. His final message was this. To respect one another, that there should not be this kind of a situation where people mass murdered and uh, try to live a decent, respectful life. That's what I, I'm hoping to do, you know, because, you know, you hear so much bullying, so much bad things that are going on, and I'm trying to impress upon people that's not the way to live, that you should respect everybody. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. It doesn't matter. We're all human. We're not born with hate. You know, it's something that comes later, and that sh there should not be. And we should speak up, everybody should speak up when they hear something that they shouldn't be talking about. You know, it's, I think it's very important. And I think that comes right down from the, from, right from the government down. You know, th this is very, very important. According to the American Jewish Yearbook, the Jewish population of Europe was about 9.5 million in 1933. In 1950, the Jewish population of Europe was about 3.5 million. In 1933, 60% of all Jews lived in Europe. In 1950, most Jews, 51%, lived in the Americas, while only a third of the world's Jewish population lived in Europe. The survivors who decided to share their stories hold within them another type of bravery and should be recognized for that. The work at school is finished. The days are sunny and warm. Our schoolmates dream about green fields, about the cheerful camp life. Never did life possess such joy and freedom from care. It seems one does everything but pray. The girls talk and look down at the boys, and the boys talk and look up at the girls. This is what the entire thing consists of. I hated porridge. No matter how much butter and sugar was added, I couldn't stand the look of the gluey mass. We had a Hanukkah play. I was one of the candles, supposedly of a menorah, and we all had a verse that we had to recite in Hebrew, and it was a very exciting thing to me. My mother was meticulous about keeping kosher and prayed three times a day even though she was a modern woman who read literature and spoke several languages. I frequently imagined myself as a great ice skating dancer performing for large audiences. When I went to Shoal, I made sure not to miss even one single word. This is how precious the Hebrew words were to me. Spring. 
warm and gentle, brings a beautiful holiday of freedom, Passover. I have the job of cleaning our windows for the holiday. In my dreams, I am a great poet, beautiful, talented, and very famous. My poems open the secret heart of the world, and its embrace carries me far away. With eyes closed, I lie for hours and daydream. Life is a mystery to me, a beautiful, secret mystery. We show you this video so you can see that these people who were killed had lives just like us and that we must never forget them.